What's going on everyone? Todd and Alex from Plat AF. It has been a minute. I haven't seen this guy for probably about six months, even though we live in the same town. And uh, I told him I had this unplugged performance cooling system for the front brakes. And we started off by saying, hey, do you have a garage and do you want to lend a hand? And now we're in my storage unit. So we're in my storage unit over here. It's cold in Idaho, but Alex is crazy and he's got short, short sleeve shirt on. <laughs> he's doing it. And we're over here, that's the trailer that I take this to track in. Got a bunch of other stuff for our other businesses. But uh, Alex is a professional race car driver. You've seen him in other videos. And he was commenting on some of this stuff to begin with. And I said, hey, we should just roll the camera so you can give your opinion on the different parts. Right. So um, first off, tell me about this cool hat you just gave me. Um, well, this is uh, some of our team merch that we run for the, the World Racing League. Uh, we have uh, E36 M3 competing 14 to 16 hour endurance races. This logo is what? This is Mag Aviation Group. This is our primary sponsor for the team. It's uh, the company that I'm also the CEO of. We provide uh, aircraft parts and we tear down private jets and uh, part them out. So for you millionaires and billionaires out there, <laughs> this is the guy you want to talk to? Yeah, if, if you need parts for your Gulfstream, magaviationgroup.com. Awesome. Yep. And then you got an American flag with the yep. green line on it? Yep, that one's to support our veterans. And then we have, uh, the World Racing League right there, which is the, the series that we compete in. We have Almonte Motorsports, which is uh, here on the back. You know, and then there's some other sponsors that are also involved with uh, with sticker status. I told Alex if he's gonna help me, I'm gonna promote everything he has because he's yeah. helping me for the next few hours to install this thing. All the team merch is available on almontemotorsports.com as well. Cool, Almonte, so, that's how you spell yep. it. Almonte Motorsports. All right, sweet. All right, so now tell us what you think about this stuff. Let's just run through it. I am, I think, I was telling you, the first civilian out here to install this. Unplugged has done a couple of installs. I don't know if anyone has received these and installed them yet out in the field. So we are the first to do it. And a couple just comments and things you have when you're looking at this stuff. So the backing plates are really nice, high quality carbon. Um, you can definitely tell that these are pre-prag done uh, in an autoclave. They finish it off with the with the gold reflective uh, thermal barrier on the back side there. These are really lightweight, they're rigid. I can tell these are a nice piece and those look like they're gonna hold up really well. The ducts for the front, the intake pieces come with this really cool magnet system. I think this will look great at shows. And by all means, guys that unplugged, if you can comment on that if you've had any experience with it, because I'm curious. I don't think there's a downside just to leaving these open all the time. I mean, I'm not driving through water and crazy debris and stuff. And if it does go through there and then it hits the back of here, it's not like this is an airtight seal. I mean, well, it's going to flush out. This is going to sit really close to the rotor. Yeah. So it is going to sit close to the rotor. If a rock came through here, it would sit there and run on your rotor. Mm. So I... It's kind of six or one, half a dozen of another. Honestly, on the race cars, these ducts have a screen over them mm. so that anything that hits them stays on the outside of the duct and doesn't, you know, something super small that can go through that can clear the backing plate, not an issue. Gotcha. But like if you were to take a rock down that or of a decent size. Stuff. Okay, gotcha. you know, okay, so maybe that's a future upgrade unplugged is to put a screen on the front of there. Screens on those. I mean, even in hindsight, if we wanted to. We could screen the inside of that. Yeah, put a screen there. Yeah, all we do is just put it over here and we just, well, and I'd then, hate to put any kind of holes in their, in their material, but, and then the duct would just slide right over the top of it. Yeah. And then there's a screen down in there and nothing can go past that. Yeah, okay. You know? Um, and then these, you were saying, definitely this stuff, uh, I'm assuming that these are cut to fit. We don't have to cut them, um, but these wires, just, just a word to the wise, definitely bend these, you know, like bend that and round it over mm -hmm. so it's not a sharp edge that yeah through so it picture. is a it is a fine line too when you do that right so you want to kind of when you fold this over you also want to take this piece and kind of put it over the other inside of the other one mm. because it supports it from wanting to uncoil so these are the same the same ductwork that we use this is a high temp silicone hose that connects to here and then this connects to there is what it looks like. Okay. I, I haven't looked at the instructions right. carefully yet, but we will. Okay. Yeah, we'll read through the instructions before we go ahead and start on this. Nice finish on the inside. Carbon tubes are not an easy thing to make and carbon tubes with brackets installed on them. You know, I wouldn't consider myself to be a composite specialist, but I've had my hands on enough carbon fiber with the aerospace industry and with racing to know when you have a nice product and when you don't. And this one looks like a really nice product. And then these sleeves are to go over the wheel position sensor yeah. wire, basically. Yeah. 
These are pretty heavy fi duty. Fiberglass with the silicone exterior. Again, another probably 12 to 1800 degree protection on that. Cool. So, all right, oh, cool. Awesome, all right, well, let's get rolling. Yep. Alex is now pulling off all these clips. It's nice to have the right tools too. These tools work so much better than a freaking screwdriver. Yeah, so basically you just use a little piece here, just a little bit. And mind you, if you're doing this install and you don't know how to take these clips off, this is probably above your pay grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Alex is pulling that. I just jacked the car up. We got some lights set up. We have our beta instructions because like I said, I think I'm the first to receive this kit. So the final instructions will be out to you when you're doing your install. We're gonna look through these, maybe give a little feedback of things that we found that'll be helpful for everyone else. And I'll be the tool fetcher, 10 millimeter socket. Here and here, it's a little fitting like this. You just pop in behind it, lift it right out. And uh, the wheel liners are ready to come out after these. There's 15 fasteners around the inside here. All right, so now we're gonna pull the wheel liner out. Uh, it's gonna be all one piece. It's gonna be fun to get back in. It's, it's getting caught up on this. All right. That's gonna be a blast to get back in. So you have to have a pallet jack <laughs> to hold your wheel liner. It's the only downside, you know? All right, make sure you have all the tools before you start the project. <laughs> yeah. Right, so there should be one bolt for the front bumper up in here somewhere. So we're at the step of about to pull the bumper off. We got the passenger side off. Alex figured out how this so there's, mechanism works. So there's a 10 millimeter bolt that's up on the inside here. Um, Is it 10 millimeter? No, no, it's that, it's that, uh, it's the T25. Was oh, it was, you're right. right. It was the T25 Torx right. bit that's up on the inside here. And uh, this kind of, there's two little clips inside here on this piece. And basically the best way to get these out is to reach around inside here after you've already got the bumper liner off and press in here while you're pulling here. Okay. Definitely have a friend help you because you're gonna put your hand up on the inside here and press against the back of the panel here and they'll pop these pieces out. So we'll show you on this side. See, so you press against the back side here. Just kinda. Don't break anything. Nope, you won't because you're kinda, you're pressing against the inside. Mm. I feel like there's really no other way to get that off other than pressing against the inside there. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff connected here, a lot of electrical on the inside, so let's see. Okay. What is connected? There's this harness thing for the lights. Looks like there's three. I think they're, they're all on your side, it looks like. Okay, there's just two harnesses here. I'll, I'll leave these intact here, actually. So these two harnesses right here need to come off. Right, and I'll just leave these. Basically. There. Oh, you gotta press the button oh. piece down. There you go. One's really uh, pain in the butt. Really on there. I can't really seem to get that off. You want to try and take a look at it? Yeah. There you go. You listen up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Should pull straight back. It's caught. Oh, lip. Okay. So now we get the bumper off. Todd's got the bumper in his hand. You're gonna want to have a place to put this thing. Can you grab that tarp and throw that tarp in the bed of the truck yep. and I'll throw it on top of that? Cool. You got it? Yeah. Cool. All right. Bumper's off. Next step on the instructions is going to be to remove the T25. Oh, so now we have to do some work to the bumper. To cut it out? Yeah, so we are going to have to work on the bumper. Okay. We got to remove the T25 grill section of the fascia. And these guys here. And that piece is going to come off. 
Yeah, he just wrote fascia equals bumper. Who calls it a freaking fascia? It's the Europeans. Getting the whole saw ready. So getting the, uh, the inside grill piece off proves to be a little bit of a challenge because you're popping little plastic against plastic clips and it's 35 degrees out here. Did you get it? Not yet, but plastic really doesn't like the cold. No. Is it breaking or what? No, but it feels pretty. Do you want me to heat it up? I have a heat gun. I mean, probably wouldn't be the worst idea. Cool, let's do it. Just to make the plastic not so ridiculously brittle. I mean, it's like literally 30 something degrees out here today, you know? I know said hair and short sleeves, but. Really not cold, man, you know? I got put a little long underwear on this. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My nose is running. See, because these have to bend back like this to pop off. And if actually, if you could hold the bumper for me. All right, the next one. All right, ready? Next one. You want me to heat it for a yeah, second? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All of them. I'd keep them like I'd keep it like right here, just kind of get radiant. Okay. Now there's the same things on the underside here, but maybe they'll come off easier because I have the tops already off. Yeah. It'll shift down. You got that thing? lift up and pull out yeah use this it says to use a flathead to pick the tabs but it's important not to damage them and that's why i didn't move the repair to the third one they got three couple use a half holes. inch hole saw oh yeah they have it off it looks like they cut to that tab too mm-hmm or maybe not i don't know Do they cut that that tab that tab looks like it's uh who's wondering did, it looks like this stays like intact but like they the, cut looks like they cut a hole and then a little here i'm gonna grab a piece of wood all right so if you're gonna do this in the back of a truck you do this customization to the piece of wood here cut it out for the uh the cables to connect to the tailgate and then this can move in further anyway custom move you hold that for me for a sec? I just got like one. Custom. Two more to come off. You got it, I got to kind of tug on it. Need a screwdriver from the other side. Uh, I don't think we can get to it. Get it for a second. I mean, it's just uh, okay. We got this piece off. And time to modify it. All Chase. right. So what we did, we took the whole saw. We used that as a template. We copied the picture on the unplugged instructions, which if you look here, it looks like it's right under that top fin. That's a two and a half inch hole with a hole saw. So we just tried to do the same thing. I went a little high on my template here. I'm going to drop it down just a hair and we're going to cut that hole. So let's do it. Maybe... Yeah. All right, hole is cut. All right, 
this one down. And so I've learned from hole saws, take it off before you do this. You don't see this, but my pinky is deformed because I almost cut my pinky off Nice. Uh, with a hole saw. Fun. About a year ago, I still numb. So I don't know how I did this, but I missed getting video of me cutting this thing out. First I cut the hole and then I had to like cut this out and I did it with a reciprocating tool. So I'll put that up on the screen so you can see what kind of tool. So you basically cut it out like this, okay? And then when I tried fitting that 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 piece in from the back, so it fit, or it fits in from the front and then that little tab comes over here, it didn't really fit all that well. So then I had to take that tool and kind of like cut it around here. It was pretty ugly. And I had to oval this out more and more and I kept flipping it over and making sure I wasn't gonna expose some bit on the front that I didn't want to. There's quite a bit of clearance. That, that, that vent piece comes to like way over here. So you have lots of space that you can cut. So anyway, I cut it um, and fit it through this way. Sorry, I don't have it on video, but hopefully my drawing gives you some idea. Now we put the fascia, or what is this called, the fascia? No, this is the... This is the fascia, the bumper is the fascia. Yeah, press these pieces back in here. You're like a European douchebag or something, you don't just say bumper? You don't say bumper anymore? No, it's a fascia. So you say bumper on like a Honda Civic, but when it's a, a Tesla Model S plaid. Hey, just be glad it's not fascist. What is this? It's probably something. Sure. Temperature or impact sensor. Well, if you ever wonder what the back of a Tesla Model S plaid bumper looks like, fascia. The fascia. The fascia looks like. There you go. I feel like you have to be Vanna White to say that term. All right, um, let's flip this down flat on its face. Line these tabs up. Because these all just pop right in. Yep. And it captures, it captures all this. Um, I would say before we click it all the way down in that we line, see that tab's not really, that'll be good. Is it still lined up? Yep. Okay. Get the bottom ones in. Click, click, click. Top ones, boom. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and then where are those Torx, little Torx bolts, are they in that bin? Oh, that's the one that goes there. I'm not tightening that down. I'm gonna do that by hand. Got a little screwdriver or something to... Yeah. So on this little this little front undercover piece for the bumper, little little tip we're gonna do. There's these three bars, like support bars. These two fit at a diagonal. It's interesting. You, you almost think that they fit in between these, like the center one does, but they don't. You see that hole and that hole. It lines up and it sits at a slight diagonal. And then we don't want to struggle trying to hold these in place. So we're going to tape these in place so that when we get this back underneath, it just lines up perfect. So let's see how that works. Tape. No, of course, I'm not going to tape. How would you say this is going so far? I think the most the, the most tedious, time-consuming part of it is doing the front bumper stuff. So I think once we put that back on, the rest of this will go pretty quick. Yeah, we've had the brake system on and off the car before, so that should go pretty smooth. I mean, it's a couple bolts. So it kind of slid in over this. Oh, is that a composite piece too? Nice. Look how much water is in there. Yeah. Hold on, I don't like that. My OCD is <laughs> kicking out of that water. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably had water in it from the day you bought it. No. Patch front section, carbon duct tube on left to outmost to rightmost 
OEM 10 millimeter bolt on composite ankle catcher. Two 10 millimeter bolts per side. You're doing driver first? Yeah, left side. So it appears that this. Oh, in between there. Those two right there. And then it says to bend. Those are 10s. Those two? Those are 12s. Yeah, no, I think those are 10s. Bend the horn bracket out of the way. So it goes in between that yep. composite piece? Yep. I'll hold that for a sec. Oh, it is a 10. Okay. I stand corrected. It messes with you because you got this other piece on the outside oh, here. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That's so my excuse. We'll let you slide. And then it says to bend the horn out of the way. So let me grab the duck. Just like that? Yes. <laughs> Would you concur, doctor? Yes. And then there is a part we got to put that that insulation foam stuff too. So. Yep. So slide these guys. I think that bracket goes in between, doesn't it? Or does it go right on top? Uh, it goes on top. It's got to be able to, oh, okay. to, be able to sit for. Okay, cool. Now for this, I'm going to need a ratchet. Tediously awful way to do it. Okay. Oh, here's a 10. Here Ratcheting. Go. So the location of this, you need ideally a little ratcheting tend like this to get it on there because that front tube's in the way. With you with a flexi position. head, with the flexi head. Because if this was straight right now, you wouldn't really be able to. Yeah. It'd be a super pain. Oh right, yeah. So there is little like grooves in there though. So. Grooves. I don't, well, there's these aren't these aren't straight holes like they're. It's this is this thing is adjustable, a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen them back up just a little bit. But how are you even tighten it? See, see what going? I mean? Like you can't. Right, right. But how how are you even tighten this once the the bumper's back on? I don't know. So I'm just gonna make it as straight as possible, and cross my fingers. So it just fits over this, not necessarily like an airtight seal or anything. It's gonna plug in, so. Right. But I mean, it's not an airtight seal. This plug is obviously smaller than that one, and it just right. sleeves inside of it. Right. Okay, so on the passenger side, when you do this on the passenger side, mm -hmm. that's when you have to use the foam tape between the passenger side and the air pump. So apparently, there's an air pump on the other side. That little rub on. Okay, why don't you start putting that? And I'll get the tape out. Okay. So the unplug kit will come with some tape. Ours. Just by accident didn't. So I grabbed this. They were shipping me some. I got impatient because I just discovered it was missing a couple days ago and they were awesome and sent it out right away. But it comes in actually today at like 4 p.m. So instead I just went and grabbed some at Home Depot pretty easy. It was just the widest stuff they had, inch and a quarter wide. And this is to prevent rattling contact. We'll see where that is once we get this put in place. So to prevent this thing from blah, 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 against the pipe. <laughs> so you put it on the pipe. <laughs> it's just on these like rubber. You know that pipe? Uh, yeah, it's in the front. Let's put it like this. So basically it's whole the top surface. The whole top surface of the pipe. Can you see? It's gonna be like this. So yeah. Yeah, I see how they did it. So if you wanna. I mean, you need like a piece like basically, that big. Basically everywhere along the whole thing. Yeah. Combat switchblade coming out. I wonder how high up on this it has to go. I mean, probably all the way up to here. Yeah. I would just throw a piece up there and then just throw a strip up to it. There. 
it contacting everybody else? I mean, it is, but it's contacting it right in the center of where you have the split on the tapes. This comes off easy. Yeah. Probably just reuse one of those. You mm -hmm. just move it to the center. It's all trial and error. Yeah, see that sits nice and flush on there now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It kind of captures it. Yeah. That should be good. Passenger ducting is in place. You can see that if it rattled on this air pump, where this added foam insulation will prevent it from rattling, making noise. It comes all the way back here right by this clip as well. So that's the way to do it. Next step here, we're putting the bumper slash fascia back on and we're gonna see if everything lines up. So I got my duct on my side. Watch the headlights. You can look through the hole. Yeah, it's lined up. I'm pretty far off over here. Does this need to lift up or no? Um, I think this one's gonna have to get, get the move yours down. It's gonna have to be adjusted that way. Okay. All right, pull it back off. All right, on the first run, what we saw here was that this duct needs to go this way. So there's our test fitting process. There's quite a bit of give in that. Allows it to move over. Let's see how much it moves. Say so it was probably there, right? Yes, yeah. It's got a little bit of bend in it too, so we can probably bend it from that side if we need to to angle it. Yeah, so. I mean, you don't really want to put composites under tension. Yeah. So let's see how close this gets. Wow. Holy shit, man. The sharpness? Yeah. Okay, take two. In? Yep. Cool. So that was it. Give it a little, just a little move of the pipe with your hand under here, just to kind of line it up you like you're it. looking into the ducts and plug right in. That cool. one plugged in too? Yeah, I, I, I had to watch it, but I got it. It's in. Okay. okay. All the holes for the bumper line up. All right, we can plug yep. the, these pieces back in. Okay, so that's clipped in. Yep. Good. It's all in. Okay, we'll secure these six bolts on the top here. Yeah, I'll start putting those on once you zip the uh, the T T25s. Okay. Okay, then we're going to connect these two sensors over here and return the red locks so that they can't come undone. This is what Alex is talking about. Those two right there. These came apart, so put those back together. I can see how the, the tube's right there. It's connected to the bumper. Now we're going to have to... So this is what it's going to look like up front here too once it's all back together. Those do really sit nice and flush. You know, when you're... When you're looking at it outside the, uh, what's that? 
Uh, it was like a little bumper piece that looks like it moved. Oh. See a little foam piece? Huh. We left the backing on one side. Yeah. I mean, these things really do sit nice and flush up in there. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so we did uh, an install speed sensor wire. Okay, so now we got to start pulling the brake caliper off. Okay. So secure front fascia with hardware, leaving wheel liners off the vehicle. Yep. Prepare to remove front brake caliper and rotor assembly. Yep. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt that attaches the brake line to the passenger side front knuckle. Remove the bolt that attaches the passenger side front brake line to the left hand front air spring module. Front air spring module. This, this thing right here, look. Yeah. Left hand air spring module, I'm guessing. See this right here? Yeah, it's coming off. It's, it's coming off, yeah. Remove the passenger side front brake caliper from the knuckle. Support the caliper by hanging the clip. Yeah, we'll do that. A uh, bungee cord. Remove the ro the rotor. The bolt attaches the passenger side. The rotor and the knuckle assembly. Pull the rotor off the assembly. Okay. Uninstall speed sensor wire from behind hub and upright assembly. Pull and then pull the blue silicone flame retardant hose from packaging insert. Speed sensor line through hose. Feel for the clips through the hose and mark sections where slits need to be cut for the retaining clips. Note: It's best to cut the slits in a slight spiral to keep hosing snug against the arm. See photo below. Okay, hmm. got it. You know, I would do pads on this before you do another track day. Yeah, you think they're looking thin? Y yeah. Too so, bad you don't have pads right now and you already have the calipers off. I do have pads right now. Do you? You have new pads for this? Yes. They might be at my house, but I could have my wife bring them. I mean, if you have them, dude, we're pulling the calipers off. You might as yeah. well change them. Let's do it. Okay. So we're at the point where we just pulled the carbon ceramic front rotor, the calipers hanging over here on the side. I noticed that this was leaking a little bit from the banjo. We tightened it up. That was a mildly loose. There's a little bit of fluid here, so that's not fantastic. And that was the old modified dust shield that we did before when we did our install. You can go back and watch that video. We put a lot of time and effort into making that beautiful. Well, now that's being replaced because we just put... In the trash. Now we got this one on. So there's the carbon ceramic one with this gold backing. Thanks, NASA. Yeah, is that NASA? Yeah, it's like, it's like space shuttle each year. All right, now we're putting this together, and then we'll hook up with the ducting. I am not tightening these down with this. I'm just starting them. Right. Because this is very thin composite, and uh, we because definitely don't want to over-tighten it because it will crack through. It will crack it. Because tight is tight, and too tight's broken. Yeah, tight is tight, and too tight is too many pieces. And anyway, this is from last several track days. This little lip, these pads are a little bit big on the carbon ceramic rotor. You can see, so I, I think the future pads need to be cut down a little bit here. Do you have Loctite? You can comment below and let me know if, if anyone has experience on this, if that's an issue, if this little brittle piece that's forming, if that's causing any sort of damage to the carbon ceramic rotor, I would imagine it's not fantastic. These things are cracked. They're not all that super worn down. They're probably about 30% worn down, but I have put five or six track days on these. I'm swapping them out while we're here. There's a little chunk missing on this one. So it's time to put new ones on while we're doing this. And Alex needs Loctite, so let me go find some. Driver's side is almost ready to do the ducting. We got this blue silicone hose over the speed sensor. It asks to do it in a spiral fashion. It, it hugs it tighter when it does that. I'll show you on the other side exactly what that means. So let's get started on this side and I will explain. So we got this wheel speed sensor off. And then there's a little point here. It needs to be pried off. Oh, it comes out so nice. So nice to have the right tool, isn't it? Right. So it wants you to poke the wheel speed sensor through here and then poke this through here, but it wants this in a spiral like this to hold it tighter behind there so it's not loosey-goosey. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a little hole through here, a little slice, and that's going to be big enough for wheel speed sensor to go through. All right. And then, so if that's here, 
and this is on this side. This can be here, this can be about right here. And that's gonna be big enough for that button. So how we did this last time is we stuck the button through first. making life easier, making a bigger hole. Okay, so we'll push that in and then what we'll do is We'll spin this around, twist that around like that. So the wire's not twisted, it's just this silicone fiberglass heat shield is twisted. Throw that back in place, and that's good to go. And then what, what held that in? Allen or what? No, there's three of those. Three of it. Oh yeah. Alex bent that in. So when you put the hose on, you want to roll that in so it doesn't continue to undo, and then puncture. Did you fasten it to that lower one, or what are you doing there? And you take the spool piece. And tuck it under that one. Tuck it under. Grab it. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Okay. So he's whispering. You can't hear him, but he's trying to tuck it under the uh, the piece below. Uh, it. See, so then now it's okay. It's pressing against here on the brick, so it's not okay. And then that won't puncture through, no, because it it's not sharp anymore. Yep. Hey, so back to this one. What what was the hardware that held the wheel speed sensor in? I got and the Torx. No Torx. Uh, I got three of these. You only have three of them. So there's four. There's one right there. Oh, should there be? F there's three. Four. Oh, oh, this is all the same. Yeah, th these three and that one are all the same. Right? Oh, okay, got it. Did you lock tight the wheel speed sensor too? Uh, I did not on the real speed sensor. Uh, might as well. Yeah, I'll do it just for fun. You can, though. Yeah. All right. This is some blue Loctite. We didn't want to go with the red one. Super hard to get off. I know it's high temp. Blue should be fine. Doesn't even call for it on the wheel speed sensor, technically. speed sensors on this is on it's got that spiral twist to it good for, for what that's worth this could have been smaller in diameter too but we got this larger sleeve that's what they used and they suggest doing that spiral twist so all good all right I'm gonna put that that shield on now now it's time to put this beauty in place too bad you won't see this ever. <laughs> Too bad you're not gonna ever see this carbon fiber. Yeah, I know. Right? Looks so nice. Makes your car happy. It does. And you know, a happy car, happy life. Because the car's like, man, you spared no expense. Thank you for using such high quality materials. Right. But no one will know unless you tell them. Yeah, they know the difference. Cars oh, yeah. We obviously have to go this way. Okay, nice 
nice and snug. All right, it's on, Loctited. Next is connecting the ducting. That's what you're doing on your side? Yes, I am. All right, let's go see what Alex is doing. I got it rolled over inside there, like we were talking about. Okay, so he's fitting this on the front tube first. How does it fit on there? Does it fit pretty easy? Um, it's pretty snug. Okay, snug. Snug, and he's making sure it's gonna bite on there a couple rings, so we know it's far enough on there. It's got that little lip that it fits over. That's nice. Yeah, that's pretty snug, huh? See, you can almost screw it in there, huh? Almost. Yeah, it's folding over on the top, though. Yeah, it's getting on there, huh? The only issue is you're not gonna be able to screw it on the other side. <laughs> it, uh, it, this side doesn't, uh, it does kind of have a little bit of a lift on it. You can't really pre-twist this to then untwist it in the screw, can you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever, screw that side first and we'll handle the other one when we get there. Let's default back to the instructions again. Are you on the connect the carbon brake shield to the front carbon ducting with the included orange flex tube? I am. Note, you may bend the flexible hose with your hands to make room for your size wheel tire combo. Bend the flexible hose with your hands. Okay, got it. And then 33, zip tie it to the sway bar, and then replace everything, and then check clearances. So we're pretty much down to the Final stretch. That ugly hose clamp hanging out to well, Kingdom Come. Yeah, I can chop it off with a grinder. I would, I would just fold it over. Mm, fold it in? Yeah. Okay. Really wanted a crazy safety wire. Right? See if this one's any easier on this end. Kind of looks like Snuffleupagus's nose. Right? Wasn't that the one on Sesame Street that had like the, I don't know. It's been a while since I watched Sesame Street. Is that wire getting over it? What? Is the wire moving over it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay. I'm just going to clamp it down now. So this one's a little easier to, to slide on than the other one. Like it seems like that front one, you almost have to screw it on and then this one yeah. actually fits. Or maybe that's just how the hose is configured. Yeah. So that thing just moves around every time you move the wheel and it can That's handle it. That's why you it. want the flexible hose. So right. So that way you can turn the wheel and... And it just handles it. Yeah. Now, okay. So you don't need this to... I'm going to down the... And, just gonna... and you were saying bend this over? Yeah. I mean, you can bend it over inside itself and then fold it over. Crack. Don't yeah. even... Well, don't push it. Don't push it. Don't you wish that. Just snug it. All right, while we're here, we're going to clean up this filthy, this filthy rotor caliper. Not rotor. Oop, this is my face. This is 
the part we were talking about earlier where Alex is bending this piece over so it's not sharp and protruding outward. Hmm. There you go. Maybe smarter than the tool. Right. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah, it has been a long day. Yeah, I mean, you can keep these tabs as spares if you want, but... Alright, so, twist that on one arm clockwise, and the wire winds on almost like a screw like a like a bolt a nut and bolt on any easier. Seems like working that back and forth gets it on there. And there's some wire on there. Good. All right, that's confirmed. It's on there. How does the, uh, how does the wheel liner fit back on here? That duct in the way. I don't know. It actually, does. That's actually the next step. Is I have the wheel liner back on. It's supposed to fit. Instructions doesn't say to modify it or anything, does it? No, not at all. Okay, well, then it should fit, is my answer, <laughs> hopefully. All right, now we can zip tie this above the sway bar. Which sway bar needs. I'm doing two zip ties around the sway bar and then two around this hose. All right, zip ties are on. off the ends. Oh, good. And it covers the hose and stuff? Hose part? I want to. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I, you could totally. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. But, I mean, I just don't want it to cut the, you don't want it to cut the hose. If you get a hole, if you get any hole in the system anywhere, the thing's not going to be efficient. Just leave it for now. Okay. 
get this together as an accomplishment. <laughs> the, the brake pads. Yeah. Brake pads are the hardest part, I think. Most tedious, maybe. All right, I got this all going. I just gotta, gotta get that rotor back on in the caliper. So I'll wait for you for that. We can double team that. Next step, getting this, this pads in there and bolt up the brake line. It's a brake line fitting, 10 millimeter bolt, then wheel liner, and then this thing's back together. Alex has got this side all put together like a master over here. It's the only spot that's suspect that is putting pressure on that, that hose. But I think it should be okay, we'll see. And after we do this, we just gotta put that front, this front undercover piece that connects under here. All right, easy. Easy, only like an eight hour process or whatever. Side number two, we're gonna walk through this. Okay. See if we can get this done in 30 minutes. 15 minutes or less. Oh, 15 minutes or less. All right. It's like, uh, or your pizza's free. Yeah, pizza's free. All right. Okay, so I'll grab the rotor. Yep. You have the caliper. Yep. And then we'll put that in place. We need a Loctite. Yep. Not have to make that mistake again, put it together without the Loctite and then having to take it out and do it all over again. Wow. Where's your, where's your knife? So this step, Alex is putting Loctite on the two Allens that come with the Uncut Performance big brake kit, carbon ceramic. And you want to use a removable Loctite for this step. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard getting the last stuff off. We used a red Loctite last time. Yeah. And yeah it was the, just too freaking hard to I take off. I grab the Allen. It's on the other side. Yeah, I'll grab it. It's on the uh, torque. So then what we're doing, because I don't have a brake pad or brake piston compression tool, we slide the old pads in through the back and we use a nice non-marring plastic little pry bar to very gently coerce the pistons back into their home <laughs> to allow for a new, fresh, larger brake pad, right? Yep. Now we need to torque these. So if you could turn the wheel to the left for me. Uh, it's called a yoke. Oh yeah, the yoke, sorry. <laughs> it's not a wheel until you get the upgrade, right? That's right, which I will be getting in March. This is 99 foot pounds. We don't go by Newton pounds, Newton meters. This one's not gonna swing like the other one did because I gotta go up. Mm. Oh shit. Man, you really need a smaller torque wrench. This thing's like comically huge. Yeah, I do have smaller torque wrenches at home too. Is it all the way, it's all the way to the left? It's far left, yeah. I just don't have a good angle on it, right? So if you want to hold it on there, I'll pull it up. Are you in? Yeah. See? Okay, that's all the way down. Okay. 
And then what, basically come down, come, with this, come down with this one now? Yeah, so come up on this. Come up on this one? Come up on this, that's what lifts this side up, yeah. So the other side of the car is completely on the ground? Correct. Okay. I'd set it down from there. Yeah, I, I'd set it down, nice and slow. Let's just torque this really quick. Do you move the jack stand? Because the jack stand was what was, was hitting when we were trying to swing it over here. Let's just turn the, let me just torque this real quick. Hold it right there. Is that enough? Yep. Uh, can you go a little more? All right, hold, hold it right there. Okay. Is that it? That one's that one. Got it? Done. Okay. A little faster. A little more. This is the method Alex was doing because we didn't have a brake piston compressor, or whatever you call it. So you put the old pads in, which fit in pretty easily. Okay, I don't want to speak too soon. And then he sticks this little plastic piece in. It's used to like pull off trim pieces and stuff and gently prise that against the pad and that compresses down the pistons. And it's nice and plastic, so it's not gonna harm the carbon ceramic rotor. And once this is done, then we pull those old pads out and we try to slide the new pads in. And with a little bit of luck, they fit. So I'm handing off a new pad now. We'll fit this in the rear first. Okay, front. Just gonna get the outer pad. You know what? This is what I did the last time. Oh, you just kind of pried it back and forth with that. I put the other one. What do you do and just go through all three of them a couple yeah, times? Yeah, just kind of trying to push them back into the caliper. Evenly. Yeah. It's kind of both, honestly. Thankfully, in the front, you can. Yep. In the okay, so not, I'm seeing it. it. Like tries to go cockeyed. Yeah. So here's here's the thing. If you put the back one in first, you can reach your hand in the front of the rotor here and kind of push the pucks back in a little bit with your fingers while you're. Yeah, so mind you, everyone watching this on the camera. He's barely, barely touching this thing. It's really am, just because it like teeter totters. I am really not hitting it. Like I'm just barely hitting it. Everyone's gonna be like, "Don't, yeah. don't hit your rotor." I mean, you put all the retaining pins and stuff on the other side, right? Oh yeah. Okay. I forgot. I didn't. I mean, you were busy doing stuff over there. I just wasn't sure. If yep. We threw it back together without putting those in. Yep. went too far in with this one. Uh, hang on one second, actually. I need to do this different. This one needs to go in first. So I'll be put that together. We'll come back once that's put back together. Well, that's how you do it. You get the top and the middle in mm -hmm. and then pry the third piece. Yep. Yeah, 
just put the spring tension out so that those things won't pop out. You just tap them until you hear that sound change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're in. Okay, you got fresh pads, brother. Let's get these caliper bolts back on, the wheel liner back in. So here's the secret. This one and this one. These Put those two. on first? Yep. Okay, that's why those posts are on there. Line those up first probably. 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 All right, so you want to leave the outside hanging out. Press fit grommet deal goes on first on the on the little post. One on the back's a little more difficult to get. I put my finger through the hole to find the bowl. The find there it is like that. All right, just put that guy over there to retain it, and then it just pops into place. Yep, it's in. And then just put all the plastic pieces in. Here, I'll hand them to you. back in place put the wheel on these gloves are trashed <laughs> maybe even before I put the wheel on we'll just put that front under piece on I don't think clearance is going to be an issue here the wheel and then again even if it is I don't think you gotta pull that apart anyway you're just gonna be moving the hose out of the way some different some way different I don't even know how you can move it it's pretty tucked out of the way okay so this clips to the front and then pushes up How does this fit in there? Is there one of those on this side too? Huh. Oh, there's a, is there a nut in the inside? Yeah, I think there is a nut in the inside. Okay, so you have all the hardware? Oh, this wheel's gonna have to come back off then. What's that? Yeah, okay. Oh, how are we getting to that nut with the, the wheel liner on? Maybe that's going first then. Yep. There's. Okay. One, two. Wheel is off. Wheel liner. Yeah, I already pulled it out. You just pop out one of those, it pulls off for easy. Okay. So that's good. All right, I'm going to climb underneath. Where's all the hardware here? Yep. Can I get this wire? Sorry. What do you mean capture the tray? You see this tray? Oh, I think it's on. It just clipped. Okay. Can I have that little nut? Some of them get the plastic little push. I No, it's pretty obvious which one. Um. Yeah, this one, look at that. Yeah, the wheel liner, it's got to come up into the wheel liner. Maybe that's why. Ready? Go ahead. All the way to the right. That's all the way. Uh, you're touching the wheel liner. The wheel liner? Yeah. Turn all the way to the uh, left. Um, is the right one touching the wheel liner now? I'm only on the left side right now. Hang on. Might have to, uh, cut where the tube comes out. No, we might have to, um, oval the tube and do it with my hands. I might need to pop the wheel off. Pop the wheel off. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just pop the wheel off real quick. 
So I missed the struggle of Alex doing this, but he just compressed that down, pushed that down because that's where the wheel is touching right there. It's rubbing right there. So he flattened this out. Yeah, I see. Okay, so you flattened it. All right. I mean, it was barely touching. So let's put the wheel back on, try it again. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a game of back and forth till we get it right. But yeah, that's going to that's gonna have to be probably a pro tip. All right, I lost audio here, so I'm going to go through this manually. So what happens at this point is we go to the other side. We go to the passenger side. It's rubbing there as well, but in a different spot. So Alex pushes on it, smashes it, gets it to oval in. And then we end up throwing the wheels back on and then we test it and it doesn't rub anymore. And then that's some other shots there. Just finishing up. We take it off of the jacks. We torque down the wheels and it's like an eight hour job, give or take, put all the plastics back on. And then we do a little outro here that, let me see if I can try to recap what we said. Okay, we said, okay, thanks for joining us, Alex, Todd, and subscribe to Plat AF, comment below. Hopefully this was a helpful instructional for you. Step by step, we did this, you know, from mid morning or late morning, fish at the end of the day. 30, 40 degree weather and uh, it's up and rolling and it's good. And I'll have to put some, some pictures up of the final product here at the end. We have the, the covers are still at my storage unit. So I don't have pictures of that, but I'll throw some pictures up here. What it looks like with final install done, open ports. So you can see what it looks like when you're rolling around on the track. I'm going to keep it open most of the time. I think I may put those covers on, you know, I'm reassured that those magnets are strong enough. They're not going to fall off. I mean, I, I guess I'm skeptical and I just feel like if a rock hits it the wrong way, it might knock off, but it sounds like it's been a tried and tested method and I should trust them. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to throw these on when it's raining. I'll throw them on when there's debris in the future. I would like to put some kind of screen in there or something to prevent any rocks or leaves or things from getting inside there, getting stuck in there. But all in all, it's a very nice product, very well made. I'm happy with it. I think it's an awesome add-on. If you're going to track your car, if you want to keep your brakes nice and cool, I think it's a no-brainer. So anyway, thanks to the team at Unplugged Performance as always. Thanks, Kirk, for all the great customer support over at Unplugged. Thank you to my buddy Alex for helping me install this, coming over and donating his time. And thanks to everyone that's followed us and uh, for your continued support. All right, we'll see you in the next video.